Hello everybody, here we are with another video. Um, hopefully we can do some voiceover it again, but before anything I need to mention to you that um, these videos are not, uh, by the time I was recording them, I was not having the intention of putting voice over them. So, um, like, I still have uh, like more than 15 other videos that I have recorded and hopefully I can um, change the editing on it so at least I can talk over it a little bit for, for you to be able to understand um, more details of what I'm doing. So, um, in the future, I will be um, recording videos purposefully for voiceover and then you will realize um, how better it will be going because uh, as I said you know um, I'm alone working in the shop most of the time uh, I have a helper but my helper is busy with his own things um, so and I don't have a person following me with a camera and pointing out and zooming in and out um, on the project so I uh, apologize if it's still kind of like fast in some areas and um, you, you can't really see anything. Um, if you think that way, the reason is what I explained. So um, without any further ado, let's get into this eagle actually. This was a very interesting project that was going on. This is um, a uh, electrocuted bald eagle, immature bald eagle, a big female. Right now, as you saw at the beginning of the video, I uh, measured the length of the neck and I am carving out a neck for the bird out of foam. Um, I don't use the um, foam rods that are just round. I like to make them kind of a square and um, basically um, grind off the edges because I think necks are not round. They are kind of square looking with round edges and I have been able to produce better formation and better um, anatomy of the neck when I apply that to my mounts. Very few percentage of birds I've been able to just put round necks in them and um, it's one of those things again you know a lot of people are putting round foam in there for the necks and they have quite beautiful success it is admirable it's not wrong to put round but it's just one of those personal things anyway so at this stage you can see I am uh, dealing with a soaked and extremely wet uh, eagle skin so I'm dab drying with a towel trying to get the excess moisture out of it and again I'm gonna tell you again that uh, in this video wherever I think I can slow down the video slow down the video for you to see more I will and other areas will get it going uh, with higher speed just just to save some um, size for the video because these are extremely um, uh, large size so right now uh, with having my references of side profile and front profile of a bald eagle face I'm trying to set the eyes with clay it gives me a lot of um, basically information when I'm looking at the when I'm looking at the references it doesn't really matter how many times I've done it I always look at references when I'm doing detail work so as you can see I'm um, adjusting the eyes on the cast of the skull by the way you know this cast of the skull thing is gonna be another video I will cover it how to how to make a mold and pour uh, a casted head out of uh, epoxy resin so um, I find it quite satisfying when I have the head and neck right in my hand at the table not attached to the skin so I can really work on it move it around look at it from different angles make sure that the eyes are set to the best of my ability and uh, then I'll insert it into uh, the skin and I just glue it around gluing that skin around the skull is something that a lot of people hate and they prefer not to use this method uh, but it's again you know something that um, 
that I have adapted and grew into it. And also these these casted heads can be expensive. Um, the silicone that we use to cast them is pretty expensive. I have a large collection of these heads. Um, I don't know how many thousands of dollars I've spent over the course of different years that um, gave me a fairly strong collection of um, skulls and uh, beaks of different birds. So. I mean the good thing is that uh, you can use the same cast for different birds but you still have to have different sizes available so they fit the skin properly. Okay now um, we are going to insert the neck wire through the head opening and um, then we'll start crazy gluing the skin around the edges of the beak that where we removed it. I'll let you watch this area with faster speed because uh, it's self-explanatory so there is nothing that I can tell you about but anyway I'm watching along the video while I'm recording the voice so if I see anything that I can mention to you I will um, I will do that I'll jump in and I uh, mention that so Yeah, I've seen some folks that they're using um, their crazy glue with a very fine point uh, that is kind of like a little fine tube attached to the nozzle of their glue. I mean, it, it sounds like a very detailed um, piece of equipment now or piece of tool that you they're using. But again, you know, I adapted to, uh, to use, you know, pour some of this glue on a little plastic um, lid or any any kind of place and just apply it with the tip of my um, large needle and just uh, apply it around the beak. It just does the job for me. And uh, these crazy glues are quite easy to mess up any kind of nozzle that you're working with them anyway. So I don't know those nozzles that those um, some, some some of you guys are using out there how long does do they last for you they usually any kind of crazy glue I use they they clog up very fast okay now here we are going to wire up the whole eagle um, I've done one wing there's no point of showing both wings uh, but you can see there's two wires sticking out of the left wing so anyway the first wire is going inside the hole that we created on both ends of the ulna which is the bigger bone of the wing and we blew out the, um, the marrow so what that that hole is still there so the, the ulna wing uh, ulna bone is empty there's no marrow in it and I insert that wire the first wire goes inside there and then I bend it right along the shoulder bone and uh, the second wing uh, the second wing wire does not need to go inside I just make sure that it's the same length as what is left out of the wing and I cut it put it beside that one and I tape it up with electrical tape I really like this electrical tape because it holds the wires beside the bone really strong and it's extremely easy to work with. Um, I'm really happy that someone came up with that idea years ago and he told me that he said hey just don't use any string use electrical tape and I thought oh my god I didn't think of it myself but I guess you know that's the value of sharing ideas. So here as you can see I'm wrapping the tape and I'll let you watch it till I see the next point that I can explain something for you. Yeah, here's the, the second wire. The tip was a little bit sticking out, so I can like, you know, um, try to lay it down right along the bone so it doesn't stick out. So basically in the ulna part of the wing, there's only one wire, but the second part of the bone or the last part of the wing that is attached to the body I like to put two wires I do have 
thicker wire that I could only use one instead of two finer wire. But I like two instead of two, th two th thinner wire instead of one thicker because it's much easier to work with them when you insert them into the body. So uh, here I just pushed the wing inside the skin but as you can see unfortunately I haven't videoed it as I said you know it was not mentioned for voiceover uh, I have wrapped up some muscle around it with cotton and uh, now I'm trying to insert the leg wires which is only one and it goes right behind the knee joint and I like to feel it from the bottom of the feet but if you're doing this make sure you don't push it too hard so if it pokes out it doesn't hurt you but I like to feel it feel the tip and feel where it's coming out from and if it's the right spot I'll just keep pushing it out yeah and I usually adjust um, how much it needs to stick out of the up at the bottom of the feet and uh, if I need to shorten it I will and if it comes out in the wrong place hey don't don't think that it needs to be right on this first first try you can pull it out and try it again so now I'm trying to um, find a good spot for the back of the bone that is going to hold the wire pretty good beside it before I can tape it up I still like to um, dry them too at this stage I keep my towel handy all the time and um, sometimes you know that moisture will still be there the ball of the joint uh, on top of the bone as you can see I like to scrape it off or um, basically use my side cutter to remove it if it's going to be in my way sometimes they are sometimes they're not so it really depends on uh, how, it, how I have cleaned that one. So and sometimes I make a little bit of a um, area for the wire to, to sit there before I can. Because you can always tape it up, but it can still move around if it's not being held in that little area on top of the bone. Yeah, this is real time. Like I haven't changed the speed of the video at all. I know that if I keep the whole video at this level or at this speed, you're gonna be sitting and watching for like six hours and you would not like it. So anyway, as I mentioned before, we'll try to keep the areas that I'm going to have a little bit of a tutorial voiceover. We're going to keep those areas in slower speed so at least you can see while I'm talking and then we'll keep the rest of the video in high speed because we don't want the video to get too large in size or too boring yeah as you can see I have the towel sitting inside the bird skin and I pull it out and dry the areas that I think I need to dry out if I see some moisture in there and I cannot use the tape properly so I just um, dry it out as simple as that I used to tumble all my birds in sawdust and the sawdust that I used was corn cup corn cup sawdust fine grit and I tell you that's 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 a great product that's a great process but I got tired of the mess afterward because when you're drying you're flying those um, corn cup sawdust all over the shop so it was and they were going everywhere and then when I changed my method to mount them wet and then dry them afterward then I didn't really need um, tumbling the bird in sawdust so the last bag of corn cup sawdust that I bought years ago it's been still sitting here in the shop untouched so anyway as you can see I'm doing the second leg and um, again I have not filmed the areas that I thought is not interesting which in this case was wrapping the, the drumstick with cotton 
or cotton batting. I'm just showing you how to push the wire on the second leg. So anyway, nothing new. It's just a repeating the first, just like the first leg. So I'll let you watch it till I see some points that uh, I can point them out for you. Okay, now we're back in a little bit of a speed again. So we're pushing the wires into the body. You must have marked your body beforehand. Pushing the wires, bringing them out from the opposite side of the body and push the end of the wire back into the body. You can see I have two wires in the wing that I'm trying to push into the body. And if they don't go, because I have pre-measured them, against the length of the body and the thickness of the body if they if they don't go to the right direction I pull them out and try again pull them out and try again so uh, as you can see I don't have a lot of wires sticking out of my wing bone because I have pre-measured them before like not necessarily with uh, measuring tape it's just like visually I know how much wire I need for it to go through the body without any um, without having too much of a wire sticking out because sometimes too much is a lot harder to work with than too little yeah as you can see like this wing is giving me a heck a little bit here so I pull them out a few times and try again and try again and sometimes when the uh, when, when you're dealing with two wires into an eagle body it can really get hard because the wires usually end up going into a little bit of a different directions into the body so it can't really give you uh, a little bit of a muscle work to push them right into the spot that you want but you know I've always done it so it's one of those things that can be a little bit challenging but not impossible to do so <clears throat> Yeah, as you can see, I can move around the neck and wing to, re to, to remove the stress from the skin. So I don't want too much stress to be applied on the skin while I'm working on it. So I basically pull the skin over the body before I start pushing the leg wires into the body. Because if I keep everything outside of the body, outside of the skin, I can really put a lot of stress on the skin and I can rip it. So right now, as you can see, I'm basically um, leaving some extra wire for the, like basically measuring the thigh bone, the thigh bone before I uh, insert the leg wire into the body from the, from the point that it needs to go in. I'm pulling the wire out and get back into into the body yeah I think unfortunately I'm not very good with gauges of wires I usually go with visual thickness um, but I believe the uh, the wire gauge that I'm using on, on Eagle's legs I believe they're gauge 9 
Yeah, and um, probably the ones that I'm using for wings, I use two. I could easily use number nine, the same wire I'm using on the leg, I can use it on the wings, but I'd rather have two because it's just easier to bend them in and work with thinner wire, like two of them instead of one thicker one. See the distance I'm leaving for the thigh bone? Make sure that the bend is quite strong right there. Leave that much a wire for the thigh and then insert the wire into the body. So a lot of folks would like to not leave that much of a thigh bone and insert the wire bone, um, the wire of the leg bone right from the top of the drumstick into the body. It's not wrong, it just needs you to be quite accurate. So, and it doesn't allow you to move your legs with a lot of freedom. Um, here, I have prepared a piece of wire with both ends sharpened, as you will see in a second. I like to brush away the feathers from inside the skin so they don't get uh, more moisture on them. Yeah, the wing, uh, the tail is not supported yet, but here I usually get a piece of wire. But again, it's not showing clearly in the video. I'm holding it with my right hand. I turn it into a U, push up the undertail coverts, and make sure that I go through the skin and into the base of the tail feathers and then into the body. That's how I support the tails with the wire. And of course, uh, again, it's not filmed here. I, uh, I apply some silicone or some uh, caulking around the tail to, to, to dry and keep it super strong. Okay, we're gonna go with super speed on the sewing part because there's nothing to explain. I wish I could really sew that fast, but I can't. Um, so anyway, the next step would be drying the bird with the blower, which again, I'm gonna go super fast on this part because there's nothing except just watching wet feathers get dry. This is a very beautiful eagle actually by the way. I mean what I like about juvenile bald eagles is that every single one of them can be different. It's not like uh, golden eagles that they're all the same. Uh, juvenile bald eagles, every single one of them can be different in coloration because they have different ages on them and whatnot. So they all, uh, like I, I have one in the shop that is quite dark all around it and this one actually this one looks like Marshall Eagle it has a, a bib in the front and it has a very bright color breast with some dark spots on it and here I'm continuing with the grooming push up all the feathers make sure that they're all lining up properly this kind of stuff I cannot really explain how it's being done it's usually a hands-on training uh, you need to be here to see exactly what I'm doing because uh, it's almost impossible to move the camera uh, with that amount of movement that I'm doing. But I do my best for you. So here I'm trying to show you the areas that have been singed by the electricity. Uh, it's very minor, some on the breast feathers, and you can see that. I'm holding them up for you, comparing to the other side that is completely good. And some on the wing feathers. So, as, as soon as I see some um, wing feathers are not um, in perfect shape, so I write that bird off for uh, a flying pose. We'll stick with the perched pose, so because I like flying pose too, but if and if they're in pristine condition. Usually road kills are good. Uh, electrocuted ones end up being perched birds so as you can see I pushed it on top of my back of my chair <laughs> that's that's my beloved temporary perch 
I'm starting to come up with a different idea because my, my uh, chair is getting trashed right now with all these wires that I've pushed through it. But anyway, it's one of those things. Uh, right now I'm trying to figure out which way the bird needs to be sitting on top of this perch that is going to be sitting properly on top of the shelves that the owner has and they have already given me the, uh, the height and everything. So the distance that you you come up with for where the wires are going through the perch is very important. Very important. It has to be studied a lot. You have to make sure that the bird is not standing with his feet too close or too far apart. It'll make or break your mount. Everything looks, when, when, when you're doing a perched mount, everything has to look perfectly good for for them to basically get together all of these things that you do if, if you do them right they'll get together and put out the result as a natural looking bird otherwise it can be the cleanest mount and uh, when you show it to someone who has some ideas of bird anatomy they're gonna tell you hey you know what that bird looks really good it's really clean but something is off I cannot point point at it and it usually comes down to the placement of the leg wires the placement of the legs on the perch or on the branch it's really important you really have to study those things and um, don't be shy of repeating like sometimes you know it doesn't matter how many birds you do sometimes I put multiple holes on a branch before I can figure out where that bird stance is gonna look best so anyway, here I am trying to briefly groom it together, bring the wing position together where I want them to be. And uh, I believe the last part of neck movement that I did on this bird was not filmed. So you will probably see this video ending with the position of the neck different, slightly different than uh, what the uh, end result pictures will show you. But it, we'll, we'll get to that point and I'll explain it. So right now I'm trying to bring the balance of the bird in place, how much the legs needs to be sticking out from the body or how much they need to be something into the body and uh, at the same time I'm trying to hide the cinch feathers and uh, make sure that you see the least part of it. This is the most fun part of the bird taxi to be grooming. I really like grooming and it's also one of the slowest part and um, posing and grooming a bird mount is, is the real result of your work. So far we've been just mounting a bird basically. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna call it stuffing because we don't stuff things. We just recreate the artificial body and artificial structure of the bird back inside of it, sew it up, now the real job begins it is posing and uh, grooming the bird making sure that all the feathers are stacked where they belong to and um, that's where it will take um, a lot of practice and a lot of studying on your behalf to see if you can pull it off properly Yeah, I always tell everyone that I can teach you how to mount a bird in a couple of days, but I cannot teach you experience. It's something that you have to uh, keep practicing and study and practicing again, figuring out where your problems are 
and be willing to accept it and be willing to fix it instead of just being too happy with what you've done and just keep staying at the same level. Yeah, and if you notice, I usually work around the bird, uh, work a little bit on the breast, go around, work a little bit on the shoulder. Right now, the breast is not done, but I've moved away and I'll come back to it again. A little bit here, around, here, here or there, all around the bird. And I step aside, give myself a little bit of a break. It's very important to watch what you've done from distance, uh, especially if you want to make it symmetric and um, come back to it, give yourself a 30 minutes coffee break, come back to it, see it again. All the, all the mistakes or all the things that they need adjustment they will pop out. Believe me, it, it happens. You can see it a lot easier when you give your eyes some break because as soon as your eyes are getting steady, uh, staring at something, you, you get used to whatever you're looking at and you can't really see anything unless you just walk away from it 10 minutes, five minutes and you come back, boom, all the differences uh, will be seen right there. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the video I still have a whole pile more videos that are not designed for voiceover I will do the voiceover over it sounds like it's more attractive to you than just the music but in the near future once I run out of these videos and I post all of them I will uh, I'll shoot some more videos only for uh, voiceovers and with more details and close-ups. Hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next week.